What's up guys and welcome to part zero I guess of my uh, new storage server build basically I'm just gonna do an unboxing right now uh, I'm running two cameras because why not and uh, yeah I got a bunch of stuff come in from the states today because US eBay is the best and uh, yeah I'm gonna actually pull these apart and check out what I got so that's why this is part zero, not really a part of anything. But I'm going to make a series of this and building my new storage server. So let's, uh, I don't know, I guess start with the small boxes. I'll start with this thing. Which I think is just a piece of metal. It's an LSI RAID uh, low profile shroud. So that's the first thing I picked up. Next up, let's do this. Some nice fat bubble wrap. Nice to see. Hopefully this is an anti-static bag. It doesn't look like it is, but that's fine. Oh, never mind, it isn't a bag. Nice. Not anti-static, it's in more bubble wrap. This, if I... Open this up, and I should probably ground myself. Uh, my fridge, my light pole, that'll do. Uh, is an LSI um, 9211 8i. It is a 8 port SAS RAID controller, which I'm going to have, if it's not already, uh, flash this to uh, IT mode. I'm basically just using it as an HBA card. So let's grab camera 2. And the reason I bought the low profile bracket is because this one doesn't have one. So. I decided I might as well grab it for cheap on eBay while I was waiting for this stuff to come, and uh, I have it ready to uh, throw on there so I don't have to, you know, use zip ties or something to hold it in. And then these are the eight, well, it's two, two four port, um, I think it's SAS 80, 8087 or something like that. I don't know what the number is of the, the cable standard, but I gotta pick up a couple of those. I don't have those yet. That's the last part I think I need. Uh, but those are gonna go to the back plane of my uh, drive bays. So those two go together. Next we got this guy, which is in a nice beat up package courtesy of the United States Postal Service. Um, I did actually use a new service, I don't know how new it is, it's the first time I've used it, for uh, bringing packages from the U.S. to Canada, called uh, Cross Border cross border Pickups, that's what it's called. So I can ship this stuff to the U.S. side, then they calculate the taxes and whatnot that I need to use to bring it across airbags and then uh, I just go pick it up in uh, at their pickup location which is nice so what this is also wrapped in bubble wrap if there's anything else in there this is a 2U power supply which 
this is going to be interesting to cut open. There we go. Hopefully the plastic sounds aren't too loud. There we go. Ambulance. Um, this. This is a... Ugh, gotta get rid of these. It's got the Molex to SATA adapters on it. Those can not be on there. Actually, I don't think I need them anyway because I think my backplane is Molex. And we've got our CPU power, um, 24 pin. So what this is, if I flip it around, let me get my other camera. This is a 2U uh, Super Micro 400 watt? Yes, 400 watt. 400 watt power supply that will fit in a server chassis. It's not redundant or anything like that, but I like it because it's got a little bit bigger of a fan than the redundant ones. So hopefully it's quieter. Uh, it is 80 plus efficiency rated, so a little bit better on the power efficiency. It's got all of the hookups that I need. Minus these SATA Molex things that I don't like, um, but I don't need them. And uh, yeah, so that's, I guess, the components. Now, to open this massive box underneath, um, let's put this down for now. Garbage can go over there. I need to actually make some room. Power supply, raid card can go over here. Now let's open this box up. It's actually not that bad to ship this thing either considering how big it is. Foam everywhere. I have my invoice. Over there, I guess. Uh, yeah, here, here it is. This is the storage server chassis. It is a Chenbro RM23212. Which I got for a decent price on uh, on eBay. Which, from what I see on the internet, these are pretty decent. I guess we'll find out. Open this up a bit. Let's see if I can get this out so you guys can see it. So there's the front. It's got 12 uh, SATA SAS drive trays and a black uh, backplane which needs um, it's got three uh, mini SAS on the back so each one is four four drive bays uh, I only have the 8i raid card right now but I'll have to pick up another one maybe a 4i to do the last four maybe I'll have some internal drives or something like that but um, I'm only gonna start with that many the way that I have the, the plan that I'm going to go with for storage is I'm going to have it so it's expandable so I can add drives later so I'm not too worried about that. Um, oh, this thing's shiny. Let's pull this out of this plastic bag so it stops making noise. So I'm going to do a little bit more of an in-depth review of this because there hasn't actually been one on the internet that that's in high enough quality that I like. So I'm going to make one grab this and do the up close a little bit. Um, it's set up for universal rails, so it's got, uh, I don't know, I don't know what these are for, but it's got these uh, pins for, I don't know, I think IBM rails have stuff like that or even the Dell ones. And it's got threaded holes all along the sides so you can mount your own. Um, the front got our power button 
feels pretty good. Our activity lights and stuff like that, and there are uh, activity lights on each one of the drive uh, trays. It is to you. Uh, let's figure out. Let's pull one of these out, I guess. These are pretty snug in there. I'm not gonna rattle around or anything. That's what the drive tray looks like. Uh, so it's got the solid spring on the drive trays, um, and they're actually solid feeling. Still pretty plasticky, made of aluminum, but you know it's got these the springs on the top to make sure there's a good fit. Also, see if you can see that the tubes that go through that provide the status lights, which you can see if I aim them at a light, maybe yeah, there you go. So you can see the uh, the status lights. Slide that back in. Easy to drop in. Looking forward to using this. Uh, the case actually opens by the looks of it completely toolless. These, uh, these spring screws at the back here. So I wasn't exactly, oh, let's grab this actually. So what ended up actually being the problem was it's not exactly a tool to get the cover off as I thought. Here's these two small screws that go here and here. So now once those are out, so that I'm not prying on this thing, it comes open perfectly. So let's slide this off over here, I guess. Let's check out the inside. Let's put these screws. This is the interior. We've got three hot swappable fans. They are San Ace 80. I'm assuming these are going to be loud AF, but. Um, they actually have pretty, it's just, uh, the way this works actually is just four screws and it's an 80 millimeter fan. And they're really heavy, they might actually be pretty solid. They're PWM, they're controlled by the, uh, the drive, um, the drive backplane, I believe. But, uh, I could just unscrew these and put my own fans in here. And they just have to be PWM and they slide in right there with that at the back, which I, by the looks of it, any fan can actually go into it. So that's nice to see. Slide that back in. Did I get it all the way in? There it goes. Um, these are our power headers. We've got a piece of something. Paper, I guess. Oh, and there's a what is this here? That must be... I'm probably wrong about this, but there's a piece of plastic in here that looks like it's glued to the surface here. And by the looks of it, I believe it's supposed to go on the back to prevent uh, discharging, like, for short circuits. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that, but it looks like there's holes here that you punch out. I'm going to look into that. Then here's our spot here for our power supply, which should fit in perfectly. And uh, we've got our area here for a full ATX motherboard, which I have a MATX board that's going to go in here. So, and then our low profile PCI Express lanes, we have seven of those. That's what the low profile back uh, bracket for the LSI card is for. And, uh, Back here, you can see our full backplane. We've got four for Molex power. We've, by the looks of it, got three on each. No, it is. Oh, there is. So there's six actually, six Molex. So I hope I have enough for that on my uh, power supply. Um, and then we have 
a bunch of fan headers by the looks of it. Um, apparently three pin for some reason. Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to have to look at the manual for this. They have a manual for these back planes. Uh, and then there's the mini SAS connectors. And uh, I'm not sure what those pins are for. But yeah, there's the 12 bay back plane. SATA and SAS. I'm going to fill it with probably a mix of both. I don't know if that works or not. I'm going to have to look into that as well. If not, then it's going to be mostly SATA drives uh, coming out of my other storage server. And uh, yeah, next video up is going to be the build log of uh, putting this thing together. So look forward to that, I guess. And if you enjoyed this unboxing, you know, give me the thumbs up on that YouTube video. And uh, if you haven't seen any of my videos before and you're interested in this build, you know, leave a subscription, I guess. And uh, I don't know, I don't really like that uh, notification button bell thing. But if you're into that, click that button as well. It'll give you a notification every time I upload. And uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you when I start building this thing.